The big thing that made everyone curious about Camp Cretaceous Season 3 was E750. This mysterious creation from Dr. Wu's lab was the cliffhanger of the Season 2 finale, and in the months since there has been much ado about E750, which was revealed to be called the Scorpius Rex through some leaks. You could not step foot into the dino corner of YouTube without being absolutely bombarded by all sorts of theory and leak videos about this new incredible hybrid in the Jurassic universe. Now, we finally got to see it, and... Uh... <laughs> This video contains massive spoilers on all things E750. I'll be showing you screenshots of the hybrid's design, and I'll take you through its entire story in Season 3 of Camp Cretaceous. So if you haven't seen Season 3 yet, and you don't want to have anything spoiled, this is where you click away, and I hope you'll come back after you've watched the season, so you can join the discussion. This is your last warning. There are major... Camp Cretaceous Season 3 spoilers in this video. Okay? Okay. As said, E750, or the Scorpius Rex, which is a dumb name, I'm sorry, starting off on a bad foot already, but the Scorpius Rex was cooked up in Dr. Wu's lab because of course it was. Dr. Wu is pretty much Dr. Frankenstein at this point. At the end of season two, it dethaws and escapes the lab in the big cliffhanger for that season. And since then, everyone was waiting with bated breath to see what it would look like and what it would do. Well, it looks dumb and it doesn't do much, so... In season two, the kids cross off the days on the chalkboard and the events of season two take place when the kids have been on the island for 22 days. Over the course of the entire season, it doesn't seem like more than a couple of days pass. So let's say season two ends at about two months after Jurassic World was overrun. Season three also doesn't seem to span more than a couple of days. Nothing in the season hints at a great passage of time. It actually seems like we get to see it day by day. And it's a few days total. Let's call it a week at most. But between season two and season three, there is an absolutely mind-boggling massive time gap. It is revealed at the end of season three that the kids have been stuck on the island for six Months. Six? Months. Let that sink in. I've said this before and I'll say it again. This series being canon drags any tension and realism from the movies through the dirt. It was a miracle, a miracle that Eric Kirby survived for eight weeks. It was actually, frankly, kind of stupid that he survived for that long. I think pretty much everyone agreed with that, considering just how rapidly people have historically died on Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna. But somehow, over the course of six months, I can't stress this enough, six months on an island full of dinosaurs, including this supposedly super scary, super dangerous E750, none of these kids have died. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? People get really offended when I say this, but at the same time, that is the exact same defense they give whenever the show gets silly or illogical. Like, how do you want me to look at it? Do you want me to take it seriously and be able to enjoy it if it does it well? Or don't you want me to take it seriously? And then I won't enjoy it at all because then it's just a kid's show. Anyway... The point is, E750 is released at the end of season two which ends at about a month since the fall of Jurassic World. And the creature doesn't start wreaking havoc until within the timeline of season three. So for five full months, E750 is roaming the island doing 
something, nothing, while the kids have been all over the place as well, apparently even crashing a helicopter but never drawing its attention or never even accidentally running into it. During this time, the Scorpius Rex has completely left them alone. All that time. Five months. Then, over the course of just a couple of days, this thing is pretty much everywhere where the kids are. The moment they become aware of its existence, they're convinced that it's going to show up at their treehouse any second. And guess what? It does. There is a montage of a single afternoon where they fortify the treehouse and then, bam, enter Scorpius Rex. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? That time jump was a mistake and I'll talk a little later about why they did this time jump and how they could have easily fixed this mistake. Anyway, back to the show. When E750 attacks the camp, we get our first good look at it. After all this time, after all this speculation, after catching glimpses of it for a couple of episodes by that point, we finally get to see it. And, well... Wait, no, that's that's not the right picture. Hold on. Let me, wait. Yeah, here you go. This, this one. Mmm... I will note the positive first. The cinematography at times is really well done. It has that classic horror movie feel to it. And it's actually very reminiscent of J.A. Bayona's style for the second half of Fallen Kingdom. So it fits in very well. And seriously, some of these shots are very cool. Too bad that they are ruined by this weird looking mug. I might be alone in this, but the Scorpius Rex is just too dumb looking for me to be scared by it. It has a distractingly derpy face. For me, all suspense left the show at the point of its reveal. The Scorpius Rex is Indoraptor meets Indominus meets Dimorphodon meets that god-awful Jurassic Park 3 hybrid concept art that thankfully was... It, it never was. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Indominus was kind of boring. It didn't take any creative risks, and it has been faulted for that. But at the very least, it kind of looked like a dinosaur. The Indoraptor didn't really come across as a dinosaur anymore. This was truly a pure movie monster. But in my opinion, an expertly designed movie monster. I love the look of the Indoraptor. It's very scary, and it's very apex predator like the scorpius rex is what you get when you order an indoraptor online they actually touch on its looks within the series itself dr wu says in his video log that masrani didn't think it was suitable to put on display for the public because it's too ugly and boy when masrani is right he's right it goes beyond the face, by the way. It also has these weird hind legs like a gerbois. Anyway, the nighttime scene at the camp and another nighttime scene later, it's it's the same night actually, does the Scorpius Rex a massive, massive favor. Darkness is its friend. This is where we get that classic horror cinematography that works really well. If you squint, if you ignore how dumb this thing looks, but that's that's fairly easy to do during the nighttime scenes. But we get to see it during unforgivable daylight a lot, and it's just ugh, ugh, yikes! It's such a derp. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? By the way, I did a quick poll on my community tab, and I'm definitely in the minority here. A lot of you thought it was scary. But I'm also not alone in my opinion, which is interesting because I think the objective would have, or at least should have been, to have E50 be scary to all. The comments paint a more nuanced picture where most people said it was both scary and derpy. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. During the attack on the treehouse, two key things about E750 are revealed. One. Its quills are poisonous. Sammy gets stabbed by the quills and falls sick as a result. Two, the Scorpius has apparently moth DNA in it or something because it is absolutely hypnotized by fire. 
Lightning hits a palm tree and it just stares at the flames. At the end of the scene, there are some roars in the distance and the Scorpius Rex just buggers off until the plot needs him again. That's... convenient. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? Jazz goes to get the antidote to save Sammy, during which she runs into the Scorpius again, because of course it's, it's unavoidable at this point, we haven't seen it for five months, but now we can't get away from it. But thankfully, she can outrun him for a very long time. Apparently, being able to do a four and a half minute mile is good enough to be able to outrun this thing. But just as he catches up with her, Ben and Darius have managed to set off an explosion so big that it draws E750's attention and because this thing is obsessed with fire, Jazz manages to escape and she gives Sammy the antidote and all is well. Never mind that Sammy had three quills lodged in her abdomen like freaking stab wounds. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? The next day, there is another big reveal about the Scorpius Rex. There are two of them. Oh shit! Wait, what? Darius starts explaining something about some creatures reproducing asexually and then he's like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, do, it doesn't matter. Let's just forget about that. And the writers really hope that you take his word for it because... Yeah, sh okay, sure, some creatures can reproduce asexually. Some creatures even reproduce through replication, but... Okay, so that means that this massive creature can just clone itself? Okay? Let's just completely brush over that amazing fact. It can replicate! This is a full-on, no-holds-barred, science fiction movie monster. Okay. Oh, and by the way, the original and the replicant, they hate each other. Whatever. I am so baffled as to why they introduced this. The oh shit moment was pretty cool, but they don't really take it anywhere and that makes it a really cheap Oh shit moment. The final confrontation with E750, well, that is with both of them, is in the original visitor center of Jurassic Park, where they pretty much recreate the kitchen scene from the first Jurassic Park movie. This scene is my favorite scene in the entire franchise, so, you know, I'm, I'm not immune to nostalgia, but god, this thing looks so dumb. It's nothing like the raptors from the original movie. It's not scary. It's more... It's more awkwardly funny, like an SNL skit. This scene is like the SNL skit version of the raptors in the kitchen scene. Anyway, he gets distracted by flamey flamey things because apparently after 25 years, nobody has thought to turn off the gas to the original park. The freaking stove still works. In 25 years, Nobody thought to screw shut that pipeline? Okay. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? The kids run into the main lobby of the visitor center when both E750s and Blue show up. Blue fights the hybrids because she likes Darius now. He saved her, so they're tight. And it's a big three-way brawl between Blue and the two hybrids, during which they do a lot of damage to the building, which gives Darius the idea to have the roof collapse on them. So the kids push over some scaffolding and that brings down the building, killing both the hybrids, but of course all kids and Blue escape. The big bad villains die by falling rubble. All Game of Thrones fans will tell you what a satisfying end that is to a character. It's not, it's dumb. But whatever, it's a kid show, right? So why were there two? I think they could have easily cut out that twist. Yeah, the show would have lacked one surprising moment, but in the end having two didn't do anything. And you're probably going to say that the purpose of the second one was that they would start infighting and damage the building enough so that it would eventually collapse on them. But if that's the ending you're working towards, you don't need a second E750 for that. They could have just had Blue fight the one and then the kids help by bringing down the scaffolding. Having two does more damage than good in my opinion. I feel like the writers did simple math here, like what's scarier than one E750? Two E750s! But creative writing isn't math, so I think that was a misstep. Another misstep was 
every single thing, literally every single thing that follows. You see, both Scorpius Rexes die in episode 8. Season 1 and season 2 only have 8 episodes in total, so this would have been the finale and that would have been perfect. The threats are dealt with, the kids get on the boat and they escape. The end. But season 3 has 10 episodes, so after dealing with the main antagonist and its eviler twin, we have two more episodes, and that was a big mistake, in my opinion. The stuff from those two episodes would have been much better in a fourth season. In episode 9 and 10, Dr. Wu and a couple of mercenaries come in to retrieve his laptop and... Dun dun dun! The bone from the Indominus. We literally get to see the cold open from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom from the perspective of the kids. And that was pretty cool, and the commentary from the kids was actually kind of funny. But it feels so tacked on. I really think it was wasted here. You could cut out the entire section between the Scorpius Rexes dying and the end of the season as it is, and nothing would change. These two episodes don't affect the ending. The kids were escaping on the boat, got stopped by the mercs. Yada yada yada, Dr. Wu, yada yada yada, the kids escape on the boat. It has zero impact. They were gonna escape on the boat anyway. I'm not saying that I didn't want to see what we got to see in those two episodes, because it was cool. I'm saying I'm sure they could have made all of that fit better in a next season somehow, with some necessary workarounds. Because obviously there will be a next season. There is a reason movies end right after the climax. You've concluded your story, you've released all of the tension you've built up, so wrap it up. Wrap it up. You don't start another mini-story because at that point you have outstayed your welcome. Your viewers have had their emotional roller coaster. they are done. You can't ask them to get invested again, not in two episodes. And Dr. Wu doesn't even arrive on time to see the E750 and be horrified by it. Be horrified that it has awoken and that it is free on the island. These two episodes really feel separate from the story. And that's very frustrating because these two episodes are the reason for the enormous time jump of five months between season two and season three. It's so they could have that cold open of Fallen Kingdom worked into the end of Camp Cretaceous season three. So these two episodes are the cause of the plot holes of what the F was E750 doing for five months? And how the F did none of those kids die in five months? But whatever, it's a kid show, right? Season three should have had eight episodes just like the previous two seasons. It should have ended with the collapse of the visitor center, killing the two hybrids and the kids escaping by boat, just as they eventually do in episode 10. In conclusion, even though I did enjoy the season overall, and you can check out my review on that, I did enjoy the season. More so, in fact, than season one and season two. But E750 was a big, big letdown, in my opinion, and further undermined by the tacked on ending of the series. By the season finale, you've kind of forgotten about E750. I was expecting an awesome hybrid, instead I got this bafflingly derpy thing that, again, really doesn't do much in the grand scheme of things. After all of the hype and after being hammered in just how dangerous it is to the ecosystem, we don't really see that. And it dies by rubble. The Uranosaurus? was scarier than E750. But that's just my opinion. Share your own opinion down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, enjoy this thing.